Today, I'm showing you how to properly apply stain to create a beautiful, long-lasting finish. So you'll be able to avoid things like blotchiness or magnifying defects, or just a finish that could wear out very quickly. So for this video, we're gonna be using two test pieces of pine wood which essentially I'll be cutting this board in half. And the first piece will just be applying stain, while the second piece will be sanded, preconditioned with a wood conditioner, stained, and then followed up with a few coats of polyurethane. And then when we're done, you can compare the two pieces side by side to see the differences in the techniques. For this project, we're gonna be using sandpaper consisting of three different grits, including 80 grit, 150 grit, and 220 grit, some pre-stain or wood conditioner, some oil-based stain, and some oil-based satin polyurethane. We got some brushes for applying the stain and polyurethane, a tack cloth, the tack in between coats, and as a bonus, I'll show you how to make some DIY wood filler that matches the species of wood that you're working with later on in the video. But before we get started with the staining, let's get this board cut in half so you can see that we're using the same piece of wood for both test pieces. Now remember, the first piece of wood that we're staining involves just staining with a rag, no pre-stain or wood conditioner, no polyurethane protective finish at the end. And guys, when you're done with your stain rags, don't just throw them in the trash. You run the risk of starting a fire. Suddenly there's a fire. What I typically do is I'll lay them flat on my garage floor, let them dry out, and once everything is completely dry, then you can go ahead and throw them in the trash. Now on the second piece here, we're gonna do a little bit of prep work that's gonna go a long way. And I promise you, if you take the time to prep, you'll be much happier with the end result. Now remember, we're using board B here, and I actually picked a board with the most amount of damage so that I can show you how important sanding and doing all the prep work is. So we're gonna start off by sanding with 80 grit sandpaper, then moving up to 150 grit and finishing off with 220 grit. Now this is going to get rid of any scratches or marks that'll get magnified once the board's stained. Next, we're gonna apply our pre-stain or wood conditioner. And what the wood conditioner does is it puts a sealer coat on top to help the wood absorb the stain more evenly, which in the end will reduce black and the blotchiness effect is something that you'll see more commonly on softwoods like pine. And when you're applying this Minwax pre-stain, you'll want to apply this with a brush or a rag. You'll want to apply the pre-stain in the direction of the grain, let it penetrate and wait 5 to 15 minutes before wiping it off. And you'll want to apply your stain within 2 hours of this pre-stain application. Now that we have our board prep, we're ready for the stain. And I'm going to be using a brush this time instead of the rag. And if you're using Minwax oil-based stain, Minwax states, use a brush or a rag, then let the stain penetrate and sit for five to 15 minutes. And then you're supposed to wait at least four hours before applying any top coat or polyurethane. So at this point, we're gonna let everything sit overnight. We'll come back tomorrow and we should be ready to put on the polyurethane. All right, now that we've given the stain proper time to dry overnight, we can put on the polyurethane coat. And the whole purpose of putting on the polyurethane is to protect this stain from any wear or UV rays. And we'll start off by wiping the surface with the tack cloth to get rid of any dirt. And the reason that we do this is because any clear coat or polyurethane is a dust magnet and we wanna reduce the amount of dust in the finished product. And we're actually going to do this between all of our coats to avoid any buildup of dust. Next, we're going to apply the poly in light and even strokes. And you don't want to apply this on too heavy because that could affect the drying time of the polyurethane. And the less strokes that you can get this done in, the better because the more strokes you use, the more dust can get into your finish. Now what we're using here is a product by Minwax. It's called their Fast Drying Polyurethane and Clear Satin and it's an oil-based polyurethane. And Minwax recommends applying a thin coat of this using a high quality natural bristle or foam brush. Then let it dry for three to four hours. So earlier in the video, I talked about a bonus tip about mixing your own DIY wood filler. And this is a great little trick, especially if you have nail holes to fill or other imperfections in your wood. And as you probably already know, getting a matching wood filler from the store can sometimes be difficult. But if you make your own wood filler from the species of wood that you're working with, the match is gonna be a lot closer than the one that you'd buy typically in the store. 
store. Plus, another cool thing is you can whip this up pretty quickly when you're in a pinch. And all we're really gonna be doing is mixing some dust from the species of wood that you're working with in some wood glue. And you can do this a couple of different ways. You can take a scrap piece of the wood that you're working with and you can just use some sandpaper. I prefer 80 grit. If you go anything coarser than 80 grit, what's gonna happen is the actual grit from the sandpaper is going to fall in your mixture and you don't want that. So you start off by just sanding your scrap piece of wood over some sort of a surface. I'm just using a paper plate here. Another thing that you can do is if you're sanding with a DA sander that has a dust collection bag on it, you can actually use the dust from that as a mixture. It's probably the quickest way to do it. I'm gonna just dump this from my dust collection and we're gonna start working with this. What you wanna do is you wanna grab the sawdust and mix it around with the glue. And the consistency that you want is kinda like a putty. So you don't want it to be runny like pancake batter. And popsicle sticks work really good or some sort of a spreader to do this. But as you can see, here's your DIY putty. The more you roll it around in the dust, the less sticky this is gonna get, which will make it a lot easier to work with. There's your putty. And again, the cool thing about this is you can do this with any wood species that you have. So whether it's walnut, maple, pine, or whatever you have laying around, you can actually save your sawdust so that you always have this sawdust on hand to mix up any wood filler that you need, especially when you're in a pinch. And the nice thing is this is gonna match your species a heck of a lot better than if you go to the store and buy it. At least that's from my experience. So we've let the polyurethane dry now. Now it's time to put on our second coat. But before we do that, we need to do some very light sanding with 220 grit just to knock off any dust nibs that latch down to the poly during the drying process. And when you're sanding, especially after your first coat of poly, you do not want to sand too much because you got to remember, this is just your first coat and if you sand too heavy, you might sand through that poly and dig into your stain. And also watch around these edges here. Reason being is that the polyurethane is actually going to be thinner around these edges so it'll be a lot easier to break through. I'm lightly just sanding this surface, hardly pressing down, and I'm sanding with the grain. Again, just to knock off any dust nibs. I do feel one slightly there, so I'm just gonna try to knock that down. You don't wanna sand too much because what'll happen is you'll sand right through your stain. And I feel like if I sand there anymore, it's gonna go through the stain because I can already see it starting to light up a little bit. Now once this coat is dry, I'm gonna go ahead and put the third coat on in the same manner that I put the second coat on, lightly sanding in between coats and then applying the tack cloth and then lastly applying the polyurethane. And because this is YouTube, we're just gonna fast forward to the finished product. So now it's time to compare our results. Now we got our two test pieces here and I have these two boards laying side by side just to show where I made this actual cut. Now remember, this one involved no prep work and no protection coat. And this is to represent a situation of where you buy the wood, you put your project together and you just throw some stain on there, which is great if you're going for that rustic look. This one on the other hand, we went through the prep work of sanding, we applied the pre-stain or wood conditioner and after the stain we applied three coats of polyurethane. And the first thing that stands out when I look at these two is the color. As you can see on the panel that we did no prep work on, the stain is a lot more inconsistent versus the panel that we did the prep work on, the stain color is a lot more consistent. And that's due mostly to the sanding and that wood conditioner that we put on beforehand. And if you notice on the board that we didn't do any prep work on, you can see how dark it is on the outsides of the face. It got very dark around this knot and that's just due to the soft wood grain soaking up the stain differently and soft woods are more prone to do this which is why you're noticing this blotchy type effect here now if you look at the board that we've sanded and we put the wood conditioner down there are still some blotchy spots on this board kind of in the same areas that are on the board that we didn't do any prep work but they're a lot less noticeable so using sanding in pre-stain or wood conditioner isn't going to eliminate any blotchiness but it is going to greatly reduce it as you can see here on the board that we did do the prep work on. Now there is a large crack on this board that you can see plain as day. That's something that this preconditioner is not really going to do much about. But other than that, I think it looks pretty decent, especially when you compare it to the board that we did no prep work on. Now as far as putting the polyurethane on, that goes a long way as well. As you can see, we not only have a difference in the sheen, but also in the color. Typically when you put on polyurethane, that's going to bring more of the grain out. And when we tacked and sanded 
in between each step. That made sure we wouldn't get any dust buildup on the surface. Overall, 99% of this board is dust free. And remember when I was sanding that poly coat trying to get rid of this dust in the corner and I told you that I probably broke through that coat of poly? Well, this is what it looks like afterwards. I'm pretty sure that's from me sanding. It may just be blotchiness, but chances are this was the outcome of that. Also, the color and sheen on this board is a lot more of a flat, dull finish versus this board that we prepped. It's got more of a satin sheen, more like a furniture finish. And I'm curious to know which finish you guys all prefer. Do you prefer more of the rustic look or do you prefer more of the finished furniture-like look? Leave it in the comments below, I'd be curious to know. So as you can see, it's not hard to get great results with staining if you're willing to put in the extra steps of prep work. And if you wanna see some examples of some more extreme staining techniques, check out this video up here.